Hello, so continuing this week's contest 161, this is um, the last problem, um, it's uh, problem number 1250, and the problem says to check if it is a good array, that's the title, now let's look at what the problem says, so we have an array um, of positive integers, and we want to select a subset of that array, and then take each element, multiply it by some integer, doesn't have to be the same, and then uh, get the sum of all those. And this array is said to be good if we can get um, the sum, that sum that I just mentioned, to be equal to 1. Um, and so we return true if the array fits this definition of a good array and false otherwise. And so an example here, we get this array, and then um, the, you, if you pick 5 and 7, multiply 5 by 13 and 7 by minus 2, you get 15 minus 14, which is equal to 1. Um, for this array, um, 29, 6, and 10, multiply 29 by 1, 6 by 1, 3, and 10 by minus 1, you get 29 minus 10 minus um, some number, but the sum is 1, right? So let's see. Um, okay, so let's see how we can solve this. So to solve this problem, there are a couple of things that are useful to know. So um, mostly math stuff. So for example, the first thing is Bizut identity, which basically just says that um, it says that if we have A and B integers, right, and um, that are um, that are not so basically if you have two integers like this and the um, and the common divisor the GCD of both um, is equal to some value D then that means that a that, that means that there exists two there exist X and y such that a multiplied by X plus B multiplied by y is equal to D so that's literally the definition of this theorem, and you can look it up and look at the um, the proof if you want, but we, we are just going to consider this one. The other thing is the um, the definition of co-prime integers. So so basically, a and B are co-prime. We can say that they are co-prime if um, their GCD is one, and the only um, numbers, two numbers that can give your GCD to be one, is when they are co-prime. Because really, co-prime means that this one, this here means that their only common divisor is one, right? And that's really the definition. So um, you cannot have um, well, that's just the definition. They are co when two numbers have um, the c their greatest common divisor to be one. That means that I co prime. There is nothing else that divides them because the greater one is one. So there is nothing else that divides them, right? So that's one thing. Um, so so what does that mean here for for our problem? So our problem says that um, we get a we get an array with some values. Let's say x1, x2, x3, and then maybe something like this, xi, and maybe xn. And we want to find the subset, um, let's say subset s in array, such that the GCD of all for x, um, let's say yi, for yi in like that s, um, the GCD of all of them is 1, right? So that's what the problem is asking. So one other thing you ca you um, to know is that if you have GCD of a bunch of numbers, let's say x1, x2, and then some other numbers, and then a, and then some other numbers, and then b, and then some other numbers, right? If a and b are co-prime, which means their GCD is um, is one. then this entire thing has to be equal to 1. Why? Because if you have, let's say, two numbers that there is no no number that divides both of them, only one is the greatest one that divides both of them, right? One is the greatest one that divides both of them. If you add 6 to those numbers, well, 6 doesn't divide any of them because the greatest one that divides them. So the problem also, just one thing, the problem says positive integers. So if 
the greatest one is one, that means there is no other positive numbers that divides them, right? And so if you have any other positive numbers, it won't divide um, it won't divide A and it won't divide B no matter what. So any other number in this list, right, in the array, um, we are sure if A and B are co-prime, it won't divide A and it won't divide B, right? So that means that we don't need to find every subset, right? We can just find if the GCD of all the elements in the array, if that's equal to 1, that means we have a subset that has um, a GCD of 1. If that doesn't exist, that means we don't have that because if we have it, no matter how many other elements we add into that set of the, these two co-prime numbers, we'll st we will we don't have we won't have uh, um, GCD one. But if we have them, no matter what numbers we add, a positive number we add, we'll still have uh, GCD equal to one. So that basically means that we'll just do something like this um, to solve the problem. We will just say, okay, f we will start out with a value. Let's call it um, J. And that would be the array of um, zero. And then we'll just go through every element in the array after that, so what from one onwards. And then we'll just compute the GCD of that element with the GCD we have so far. Uh, maybe it would be easier to read if I put it like this. G, A, right? And then we can just at the end return J equal to one. So the trick here to notice that we don't need to generate every subset, right? Um, because if we have any two numbers that have GCD one, if we add more numbers, it doesn't it doesn't matter. The GCD will be one. The thing is, we don't know these two numbers where they are. They may be here and here. They may be here and here, right? So we can just take the entire thing and check if the GCD is one. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it for this uh, problem. So let's uh, code it and see if it passes the test cases. Um, okay, so I just typed the code that we just um, mentioned in the overview, which is um, start with the first number. The problem says that we have um, an array of at least one number, so we don't need to worry, worry about empty arrays. And then we take, we go through the rest of the array, and we GCD everyone with the, with the other, with the new value. And if the entire array GCD of the entire array is one, then we have a solution. Otherwise, no matter what, we don't have a subset that has GCD1. And this GCD function, I can just import from um, uh, Python's, uh, Python's um, math library. And let's just submit or run it on an example first. Okay, so it passes. Now let's just submit. Um, okay, so that solution passes. Um, in terms of time complexity here, um, it's just O of n, right? Because we are just going through um, the array once, so it's just O of n. And space complexity, we are not using any extra space, it's just this variable, which is constant, so um, the time complexity, uh, the space complexity is O of n. Um, yeah, so that's it for this problem. Thanks for watching, and see you next time. Bye.